Hello, tea friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service, and we are back at the On TV Studios and ready for our current podcast. And I'm here with studio engineer, Arm Candy co-host Chris Gully. Hey, Chris. Uh, present and accounted for. <laughs> I see you. Yes. Okay. All right. So we are firmly in the double digits. We are on podcast 11. Fantastic. It is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. So today we've got a lot of ground to cover. Mm-hmm. We're going to be traveling all over. So hopefully we can get everything in our 30 minutes. Talk fast. Uh, that's my specialty. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Vienna. Mm-hmm. We're going to travel all the way to Vienna and royal palaces, and then we will come back and talk to someplace about someplace a little closer to home. Uh huh. It's a whirlwind tour. It is. So New Baltimore, a little bit closer than Austria. Yeah. Well. Wow. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about the shelf life of tea. That's mm-hmm. a lot of people ask me about that. Right. And we will, if we have time, and we really want to get to this, we have some listener feedback, and we're pouring on more controversy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. It's the triple C. Uh-huh. Okay. And we'll, 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 we'll expand upon that later. We will. Stay tuned. Okay. So, first, T. Here we go. All right. So, today's T is a T. It's called Vienna T. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to show this if you're watching. Right. This is the ET. Right. And I purchased this. I purchased this when we were at the Schönbrunn Palace in mm-hmm. Austria. Uh-huh. And it's, there's not a lot of description. I don't know a whole lot about this tea, but yeah. it is a salon black tea. What do you think of it? So, yeah, uh, uh, so it's a little, um, uh, so we did a I, uh, we did a breakfast tea last time. That's right. And this is a kind of a different. Uh, so it's lighter. Uh, I would say, um, you know, maybe a, a, a bit of a floralness in it, but also, um, I'm going to say, kind of a like a taste of walnuts in there. Ooh. Okay. I do not disagree with that at mm-hmm. all. Right. And and. It is typically, so this is, salon tea is from Sri Lanka. Right. And it's usually has some citrusy, Mm -hmm. floral, even spice. Yes. Right. And, but it really depends on where it is specifically. Right. Uh, But it's typically known to have a full body taste. Okay. Do you get that? Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. And not, uh, so, I mean, and it's not, uh, what's the word, Uh, uh, not, uh, doesn't have that astringent quality. Uh, this one, like like some of the others we've had. Uh, yes, I I would agree with that. It's it's milder. Yep. And and yet full body. Yes. So it's got a lot going yeah. for it. Right. And I I really like it. Good. So I thank you for that, Chris. Great mm-hmm. uh, analysis. <laughs> well, I, it's my it's my uh, my flavor wheels. That's that's my cheat sheet. You come fully prepared. That's right. I try two. Flavor wheels. Yes. Okay. So I selected this tea, and I typically seem to have two reasons. This mm-hmm. I also have two reasons for selecting this tea. Mm-hmm. The first is we are going to be talking about Schönbrunn Palace. Yes. And I bought that in the gift shop. Uh-huh. And the other reason I chose it is because this is the end of the the tea in this tin. Uh huh. And we're kind of pushing it as far as it's. Good quality life as yeah, as right. uh, as uh-huh. a tea, and I thought, well, we better use it now because we went to Austria as part of a Blue Danube cruise, right? Late twenty twenty one. We did, and saw a lot of great things. Mm-hmm. We were there with our travel right uh, companions, right? Ed, my had brother great, Ed, and Sammy, had a great time. Yep, yep and cousins, and so we went there. When you think about it, late 2021, yeah. this is when I bought the tea. Yes. <laughs> is that too long? Can you still keep tea? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you. Okay. And these are just guidelines. They're sure. rules of thumb. Right. You know, 
uh, it depends a lot on the tea, mm-hmm. and it depends on how you store it. Mm-hmm. So here's some just guidelines right. straight up, okay? Black tea can go one to two years. Mm-hmm. Some say even three. So we're, we're pushing it. Sure. Yep. <laughs> we're taking yep. it to the limit. Yep. And for white tea, one to two years. Mm-hmm. Green tea, one year. Okay. And then for herbals, right. this one is might shock you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Three months is really said to be maximum. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, so it's not uh, so uh, f- um, herbal teas are not teas. They're not. They're right. not from the Camilla sinensis plant. Correct. They're they're other other ingredients. So right. it's you know their profile is going to be different. Right. Exactly. So a lot of the florals that you get with lavender and chamomile tea, mm-hmm. they're going to lose that right. quickly. So mm-hmm. three months really is maximum. Yep. So. I think now I think this tastes pretty good for, mm-hmm. for yes yeah it does yeah. going it's, on three it's, years yeah, it's held on well <laughs> for all of its travels and I think part of that is because we stored it properly right mm-hmm. so I'm going to ask you mm-hmm. a question yes what are the what do you think the three enemies of tea three, are three enemies when you are storing tea three enemies uh, I'd say uh, uh, partying too hard <laughs> communism. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, I'm, uh, I can't even make up the third one because I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to say those are two guesses. I'm yeah. not going to say they're necessarily good guesses. Well, okay. But <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but what they really are yes. is sunlight, uh-huh. moisture, and temperature. Yes. Which are all related. Yeah. And what you want to do is store your tea, whether it's loose or tea bags. Right. You want to store it in an, an opaque, dark canister something that won't let those things come in uh-huh. because tea absorbs what it's near yes so even a plastic container can let some of that mm-hmm. what it's around well, that's good to know i that i think that's uh, maybe a little counterintuitive because uh we like many people store a lot of stuff in plastic throw it in the back of the fridge oh. until it starts turning green it, <laughs> hey and <laughs> you know what if it is, starts out as green tea yeah there are some exceptions. You want to store it in the refrigerator, like right. like ah. your matcha. Okay, there you go. Yes, so that's true. You weren't too far off okay. there. All right. Okay. But not in plastic. Not in plastic. All right. And I think the reason I, I mentioned this still tastes very good is because we store it properly. Mm-hmm. So it is in its own. I have my own tea pantry. Yes. And I think you'd like me to maybe weed it out a little well, bit. <laughs> maybe maybe a little uh, editing from yes, time to time. Yes. Yes. Would be appropriate. Okay. So. But it is in its own space. Mm-hmm. It's away from the coffee and it's away from spice. You right. Have, you have your own spice pantry. I do, yeah. And it it really is beautiful. You, yes. you It's something to admire. It is. It, it's, 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 a, it's a work of art. <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah. So we keep it away from that again because right. tea is going to absorb what it's around. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, how do you know when the tea has expired? Um, I imagine, um, probably, uh, there's a, maybe an, uh, an off taste or something like that or. Exactly. Exactly. It's not like some of, some foods you have to pay really strict attention right. to their expiration or you'll know it by right. smell or, right. or, uh, and you know, you gotta be careful because sometimes if you eat things that have yeah. passed their shelf life, you'll get sick. Yes. But really with tea, yeah. the biggest indicator is how it looks Mm -hmm. and how it tastes right so if it's dull looking and it tastes Mm -hmm. not good (laughs) tired i think yeah it tastes tired yes and one thing i'm going to throw out there because sometimes people maybe you're not a tea drinker right but you've you've been gifted it or you purchased it maybe 10 years ago and you've just kind of kept it right maybe near a spice shelf or whatever. Yep. And you have not edited your tea pantry. Yep. You have not. And someone who loves tea comes over and you say, oh, I have some tea. I'd, you know, right. I'm going to get that out. And if it hasn't been stored properly, it's not going to taste very good. You will not impress your guest. You won't. So, But they'll be polite. Uh, yeah. Yes. Because tea drinkers <laughs> are generally are generally polite yes yes you know one thing you might want to throw out there if you're the guest is um how old is this tea (laughs) that's not poor yeah okay all right 
So that is uh, our little tip for today. And Very nice. Let's move on to Sean Brun, yep. the home of our almost expired team. Okay. Okay. So remember going to the Sean Brun Palace? Yeah. So that was, uh, you, you kind of touched on it, it was uh, 2021. And uh, uh, due to, I don't know, something that was happening in the, in the world at the time, we almost had the place to ourselves it was very weird <laughs> uh i mean just a real lack of of, of crowds um in such a, which is obviously a big tourist area right that was the silver lining right. i think you know if you're looking at it because it, we had to follow some pretty strict protocol on the ship yep, yep. we had to be tested every day yep. and wear masks right. all the time yep. and Good times. <laughs> Good times, exactly. But it it was one of those advantages because even when we were in Salzburg, right, where they filmed Sound of Music, yeah, they said normal, when we were there. Normally, you're elbow to elbow. Yeah, you, yeah. So you really don't get to see much, and yeah. we yeah had pretty much run of the town, which exactly. was which was nice. Yeah. So anyway, one of the things that we did do was the Sean Brunn Palace, mm-hmm. and this was part of the. The cruise excursions you could opt yeah, for this, right, right. and our team was deciding whether we were going to do a waltz dance instruction uh-huh. <laughs> or go to Sean Brun Palace, and we were debating it a little bit. But just it's almost yeah like fate. Uh, it was a category on Jeopardy. That's right, Sean Brun Palace. Yes. I'm like, oh, we're doing this. Yep. Okay, so we ended up not taking the waltz class which is probably the right decision it was such the right decision so because we haven't been asked really to do a waltz lately have we um no matter of fact i think we've been asked not to waltz (laughs) okay so we're we we made the right decision we went to sean brun palace and the sean brun palace is the home it was the summer palace of the Habsburgs, right and the Habsburgs, they ruled the Austria Hungary Empire uh-huh. for centuries. Right. Late thirteen no, late th- yeah, late to the thirteenth century right. to that fateful yep. nineteen eighteen. A little World War One kind of ended that party. It did. It did. So when we we went there, we got to see the 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 opulence of this palace. Yes. But that's not how it started its life. Yes. It started more as I'll say humble, right? Humble hunting lodge, right? Not unlike another great palace that we visited. Uh, oh, Versailles. Versailles. Yeah. Versailles started as a hunting lodge. Yes. So, and I might add yeah. uh, a third example uh, might be um, our property. Uh, a pop-up camper <laughs> was. Our, started out as our hunting lodge, and uh, we built our own palace. You know, it we history repeats. It it does, and and I think this is a good time to mention that you are indeed a titled. I, I this is true. This is person. True. Yes. You are Lord of Glencoe. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Me and uh, maybe a hundred thousand <laughs> other my fellow lords. Well, you should be proud of it because it it cost over a hundred dollars. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you are, uh, you own some right. property in Scotland. Yes. All right, so yes, very yep. much similar, mm-hmm. Pemberley yeah. to Versailles yeah. and Sean. Exactly, okay. All right, so when, when, so it, is, it started out as this humble hunting lodge, but when Maria Teresa takes over, uh-huh. that's when it just goes full palace. Yeah, right. And she was, she ruled in the 1700s for right. 40 years. Mm-hmm. And she had, she had 16 children with yes. her husband. Mm-hmm. She ruled this empire. Yep. She built onto this huge palace. Right. And I mean, yeah. it's quite a person. She's the whole package. She was the whole package. And even her enemies had to admire her. And I'm going to paraphrase, but mm-hmm. a Prussian emperor at the time said, Finally, mm-hmm. when Austria gets a great man, it's a woman. Wow, kind of a <laughs> kind of a mean thing to say about the men, I guess. Huh? <laughs> well, okay. they they weren't, I guess, uh, as amazing as she was. All but right. part of Maria Teresa's diplomacy was marrying off her children to mm. different places, right. so they could keep the peace. And sort of. Sort of. <laughs> that was the intention. Yeah. 
but she married her one daughter, probably her most famous daughter is. Oh, uh, Marie Antoinette. Yes. So another connection to Versailles. Yes. Uh-huh. And that was, you know, we know how that turned out. Right. But, but when we went to Sean Brun, they don't allow you to take pictures. Right. And Which I promptly forgot. Promptly forgot, which I think was kind of okay yeah. because we got one picture of the Great Gallery. Before I was yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> and it they take, they kind of took this, I think they lifted it or copied it perhaps yeah. from Versailles, mm-hmm. the Hall of Mirrors. That's sure. what it looks like. Yeah. But even our tour guide said, I don't know why you can't take pictures. I think they just want to sell more of yeah. their books. Yeah. So for those of you who are watching, I'm yes. going to show you, this is what I I bought. I yes. had to buy uh-huh. so I could get pictures. Yes. And I also just recently bought this. This will be a future Tuesday Tea and Tomes. Uh-huh. That's a lot of Habsburg. A lot of Habsburg. There we go. Okay. So, so then I think we really – enjoyed that that tour it yeah. was it was something yes, wasn't it was it? Good, yes and then we'll, we'll fast forward to a little bit uh closer to our time in the 1800s right and when we were in the gift shop we saw all this stuff related to cc right s-i-s-i yeah and and it was a you know it was a a, a beautiful woman and posters and it was some kind of TV show or movie or something like that, and we had you know, we were a little more tuned into you know English history and that sort of thing. Right. But you know Eastern European history, we don't typically get a whole lot of exposure to here, which is too bad. Um, right. But anyway, so uh, so continue. <laughs> we did. We later found out. <laughs> well, big time. Exactly, and that's how our tour guide said because I said, "Oh, what is yeah. uh, who is Cece?" And yeah. she goes, "She's like your princess died." Right. Yeah. That's that's yep. how she's very popular and famous with people here right. in Austria. So a little bit about her story. Right. So in 1854, she married Franz Joseph the first. Right. And interesting how she met him or mm-hmm. how this came about. Right. Was after Franz Joseph's father had passed away, his his wife Sophia, mm-hmm. she wants her son to get married. Right. And she's quite domineering. Right. And she's been putting these yep. ladies in front of Franz Joseph, and he doesn't like any of them. No. So she gets in touch with her sister. You know, they weren't texting back then, didn't right. have a phone, but yep. she got word out to her sister that, yep. you know, why don't you bring your oldest daughter here? Yeah. They lived in another section of Germany. Yeah. And said, so let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. So they come, I believe it was Bavaria, mm-hmm. they come and she just does, she doesn't bring her oldest daughter alone. She brings right. her youngest daughter, right. who is Elizabeth. Yes. Cece. Aha. Uh-huh. So Cece is said to have been so beautiful yes. and that's who Franz wanted to marry. Uh-huh. So that's what he s- insisted upon and that's why they were married. She was 17, he was 24. Yeah. So it wasn't like a total creep out at yeah, all. No. Uh, like we see with a lot of those arranged marriages. Right. Where the the young bride is in her late teens and the the groom is in his fifties yeah. or sixties, and uh, or like a Hollywood movie, <laughs> like White Christmas. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. <laughs> or even poor Christina Cowper. That's right. She was gonna be oh, yeah. hooked to that. Oh yeah. Old dude. Bridgerton okay. reference. Yes, Bridgerton reference. Okay, so with Cece, she was. Again, a lot like Princess Di. Uh-huh. She was pretty. She yep. was fashionable. She was popular with the common people because uh-huh. she reached out to right. them. She connected with them. Right. But she also suffered from bouts of depression. Uh-huh. And it, they had one son. Mm-hmm. In France. They had four children, but one son. Right. And he, he had a rather tragic yep. life. Right. Um, he ended up. Dying, it was a murder suicide yeah. pact Ooh. at a hunting lodge that yeah. he had purchased, and then she was assassinated when she was sixty. Yes, yeah. So it was very sad. And then you know the the heir was a nephew of Franz Joseph, right. who and then uh, Franz Ferdinand, right, who kicked off his murder, kicked off World War One, yes, 
and also was the name of a Scottish band in 2003. But Franz Ferdinand ended the Habsburg right. dynasty. So enough of these feel-good yes, stories. Yes, I know. <laughs> we'll move <laughs> <Wow>. on. <laughs> so, okay, let's move over to uh, a little closer to home. Yes. And we want to talk about a tea house that we had visited a few weeks ago after one of our podcasts. Yes. We took a drive out to New Baltimore. It was a gorgeous day. Beautiful day. Yep. And the pink house is located on Anchor Bay. Right. And it was now patio season because I've known the owner, Jennifer C. She's, mm-hmm. She had just delicious scones. She had the royal... Uh, Royal Treat Tea Room in mm. in Roseville, right? And I'd been there a few times right. and had bought her scones. But right. then a few years ago, she purchased this pink house right. and renovated it, made it a tea house and B and B, right? And now her son joins her. Yes, Rex. yeah. So we got to uh, meet up with them right. out on the patio. Mm-hmm. Her son now goes by T Rex. T E A. <laughs> yes, I think that's very cute. And okay. Lovely. Anyway, they've got a, a lot of cool things going on there. Yes. And when I was there to, the last time at the Pink House, I was with Pam, yep. BTS team member, and it was in November. Yep. Great food, great service. And, you know, so really, I, it's kind of an overused term, but it had a just a, a really a lot of energy, good good vibe. Yes. The, the staff was great. I mean, busy. they were busy, but uh, with uh, but very attentive. You know, and, and that, which we, you know, which you as a as a customer, you appreciate. Absolutely, you're right. There, yeah. there is a lot of good energy there. And actually, we just went up to the bar. Yeah, yeah. And they have counter seating. Yep. Uh, they were so busy, yep. and we hadn't made reservations. Yeah. But we we said, hey, we'll just sit at the counter. We yep. we we opted for that. Right. Right. And it, that was wonderful, too. It was great. And a nice vibe. So they've got some plans coming up. Right. They they added another space for dining uh-huh. that Jennifer's just putting on some right. last-minute decor. They have uh, they are now going to have the patio open. So now, it, now November yeah, yeah. in Michigan. Yeah. Now we can enjoy That's that. That's right, yes. So they might be doing extended hours. Yes. Which, can you imagine, sunset? Yes. On, beautiful on that patio okay so i want to ask you though what did you think of the 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 food and uh oh the it, was, tea? it was well it was really well done uh you know the whole the whole experience was was uh, was very good would recommend i hope we can go back there again sometime uh i oh we will yeah. <laughs> and i think it, it's it's not there were a fair amount of gents you are not alone uh this is true yeah yeah. They uh, so they do. Um, should mention uh, their menu. They don't uh, uh, um, th- that I could see. They don't do tea sandwiches and that sort of thing. There's a lot of quiches, and uh, which was I I had yeah, which was uh, wonderful and, and that type of right. Of food. You can get the, the full tea service if you want. Right, 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 right. But, but just off their menu. Correct, correct. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that that quiche, they have this. Signature quiche, very nice and creamy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go back for sure. Yep. And this leads, speaking of something creamy. Yes. This leads Uh-oh. to our viewer feedback. And I think we do have a little bit of time, don't yep. we? Oh, yes. Yeah, so we're good. Yep. Okay. So we're calling this the CCC. As opposed to CC, the Empress. That's right. <laughs> Oh, that's a clever tie-in. I am clever. Okay. So, but I'm going to add another C to Okay, it. yes. So, it was going to be the clotted cream controversy. That's right. But I'm adding another C. Okay. A bouncy C. Okay. <laughs> All right. And this is the clotted cream controversy clarification. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, I think uh, in one of our earlier podcasts, we just we kind of touched on, on clotted cream and I think we're talking about scones being uh, a a clotted cream and jam delivery system. Right. And uh, if you go to a, a you know a, a tea room, you can typically get clotted cream there. Right. And I think at that podcast, mm-hmm. which I believe was number four, yeah. you had mentioned you can't get clotted cream. No, in that's the true. US. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, yes, that was true. Yeah. And we had some keen listeners. That's right. 
say. Hmm. hmm. That's that's quite that's a bold statement. That is a bold statement. Yeah. And you can yes. you can purchase clotted cream yes. at the grocery store. Yes. And the difference is Yep. And here's, uh, I hear a butt coming on. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I could say that for sure. This is not true clotted cream, right? In its truest form, right? There's there's capital C clotted cream, and then there's maybe small c right. clotted cream, right? So, clotted cream is made from unpasteurized milk, right? And in the 1920s, right. in the U.S., right, right. The law became all milk has to be pasteurized. Right. And together with that, it's homogenized to right. get more consistency, right. mm-hmm. nicer flavor. Right. That happened in the 1920s. Right. That put an end to clotted cream uh-huh. in the U.S. Right. So what what we're, we're seeing is a close right. approximation of clotted cream right. with pasteurized milk. Yes. But it's not the kind you can get in England. Right. Because they don't have to have they it don't yeah, pasteurized. they don't have to have it pasteurized, yeah. So there are some states that do allow some selling of unpasteurized right. mm-hmm. milk. So and we've been told by our attentive listeners yes. that there are some right near us. Right. If that's the case, yes. Buy some and make some clotted cream, which is a uh, uh, yeah, which is actually not that uh, that difficult um, from what we've read. Right. Yet, yet to try it. Right. Right. It's it's just time consuming because right. I right. think you have to bake it for like twelve hours. Yeah. Or right. Something. At low at low at, at uh, uh, very low heat. Right. That sort of thing. Right. But I think does that clarify that or I, I think uh, we've done a wonderful job. <laughs> And I, I think that is that is an important yep. thing to know because you can for sure get clotted cream here. It does. It will right. say clotted cream. Right. But it's not what yeah. we've enjoyed yes. in England. That's right. But we've still enjoyed it. That's right. Okay. So I do want to note that we have uh, a few interesting things in our blog mm-hmm. this week. We've got the pink house. Yes. You want to read about that? Mm-hmm. We have a Tuesday tea and tone, but I'm going to save that for an, a future podcast. Mm-hmm. We're also going to be talking about Bridgerton mm-hmm. because the, as we mentioned earlier, the season three part two has dropped. Mm-hmm. And oh, you know what? I also wanted to quickly mention that when we talked about Bridgerton coming on, Cece, yes, her story. When we came back from oh, yes. Austria, yeah. there is a, a Netflix series called The Empress. Yes, and they that we saw the full first yep. season and, and enjoyed it oh loved it and so yep. there's going to be a season two right. reportedly there's they're working on season two right. so that's really great okay okay so check out our our blog for those stories mm-hmm. and upcoming stories and right i think i might hear that sound you do there we go Oh, okay, I hear the the kettle saying, yeah. "Time to wrap up." That's right. I want to thank everybody for listening slash watching. I want to thank my wonderful co-host, Arm Candy Chris. Thank you. And we want to thank On TV Studios mm-hmm. once again, and we appreciate all of you staying tuned. Nice. Okay, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>